Thanks for joining Rudy and me today. We're in Romans chapter 10. Uh, in verse 4 of chapter 10, we talked about this yesterday quite a bit. We read, Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. We're not going to cover all that, or we take up all our time today. But we're going to come now to a follow-up on that verse 5. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that's to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the abyss, that's to bring Christ up from the dead. What does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we proclaim. Uh, because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him the dead, you'll be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. There's no distinction between Jew and Greek, the same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. There's a lot there. Yeah, thank God for that. Really, Take the first shot at that, sir. Well, I remember when I was considering this as a young believer, and in Jewish prayer, it's never silent. It's always at least mumbled, every word. And so there's something about confessing with your lips. Uh -huh. And I think this, uh, because if you confess with your, with your mouth that the, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Right. So it is speaking it. And you know, I, and when I was a young believer and even today, there's some things that I pray out loud mm -hmm. uh, that I want the evil one to hear me say. Yeah. yeah. And that is kind of in this as well. Yeah, yeah. So when I, when I look at this, uh, First of all, he's, he's again talking about righteousness that comes from faith. And we have to understand faith is not picking up a ticket to heaven through a prayer and then living our life as if there's no God. Faith is complete reliance upon the Lord. And, and so it, it's contrasted. We talked yesterday about how there are certain things that can be done uh, that probably can fuel our religious pride. Uh, and and they, they would be different from different people or different groups of people, but they basically say, I'm better than you. I've, I've done this, you haven't, you know, God must like me. That's, that's, I could put the law in that category. Faith says, like I say so often, it's one beggar telling another beggar where the bread is. God, I'm a beggar before you. I need you. I fully rely upon you. After saying that, I want to come down to the, the uh, saying that Jesus is Lord. Paul wrote that you, no one can say Jesus is Lord except through the Holy Spirit. Isaiah has really impacted my life as, as you and hopefully millions of other people for that matter. But Isaiah talked about my lips are unclean when he, when he saw a vision of God. And what he was saying, I believe, was that his inside condition, reflected by his lips, was unclean. And so when we believe in our heart, we are, we are going to our inside person that is reflected in our speech. How we talk reflects our faith. So if, if, we, if we're talking improperly and we're talking wrongly and negatively, we need to go back and check our faith. So I, I just dumped that out there, Rudy, and you're looking for something, but I'm through talking. You better, you better, you better go quick. <clears throat> well, it, it reminds me of, the, of what Isaiah said at the end of chapter six is where yeah. he basically says that my lips are unclean and yeah. then really God just shows him that he can make his lips clean. Yes, sir. And that's, that's pretty much what we need over and over and over again because 
as we find, as we live our lives, we realize we cannot, we cannot stay, we, 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 we do not stay on the path. No. And, but we do know the one that did stay on the path. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what the meaning of, that's part of the meaning of life it's like is that you, because of our free will, mm -hmm. we're, we choose the wrong way because we believe we know best. Yeah. And really, completely relying on God should eliminate that, yes. but it doesn't. Right. And uh, I'll save the end of Isaiah's speech because really it has, I read that this morning, I, that's why it's rolling around <laughs> in my head, and because it has more to do with the, the grafting in than it does yeah. this particular section. Yeah, we're going to get to a passage about the graft again of people like me, the Gentiles, into the Jewish faith. And I'll be interviewing Rudy on that. Let me let me make a final comment, and I'm going to pray. Uh, and that is, there's no distinction between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all. And so what God began with Abraham, and then brought about through Jesus that makes you and me brothers in Christ is it's the same Lord. He is Lord of all. Right, and I said this last time we were taping about the sacrificial system within Pentecost, mm -hmm. which is called Shavuot, and it's the anniversary of the Ten Commandments right. and the anniversary of giving of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's plain within that that God was always going to choose everyone. Yeah. And so the same Lord is generous to all who call on Him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I have said in the past, I got this in seminary, thank God that when we get to heaven, we don't have to pass a theological exam. I didn't know any theology. I'd never read this part of the Bible. I'd read just minim minimal portions of the Bible. I was in church. Uh, sermon wasn't very good, the music wasn't very good, but God is. And He spoke to me and I said, this is my prayer, God, you can have my life. That's all I needed to say. And it changed, it changed all of my life from age 18 until now and will change all of eternity. And, and the good news is people come to God with simple faith. God, I trust my life to you. Not playing games with him. God, I trust my life to you. And he comes and works with us. Yeah, and Paul's saying that uh, that Jesus is Lord uh, in verse 7 or verse 9. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, right. this could easily be capitalized into the Tetragrammaton of the Old Testament. Tetragrammaton is that special name God has. Right, and he, and he gave it to Moses at the burning bush. Right. And basically Jesus, I mean, Paul is telling you right. it was Jesus at the burning bush. You got it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for the truth of your love. Lord, we thank you that you died on the cross and rose from the dead, gave us the Holy Spirit, and we can interact with you as friends because you, you are just exactly who you are. We give you praise today. Bless us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.